Hey, good morning. Been a while since I did a video, and I'm going to do a couple of them. Today I've been pretty busy, and I've fallen off the horse here and there, but hey, on this video I just want to talk about uh, some stuff that happens on the farm, or at your house even. Uh, <clears throat> if you're like me, you like creature comforts, and you enjoy your air conditioner. One of the houses here on the farm had a blower fan that would stay on all the time. And uh, and it wouldn't, it would, it would stay on low, so it wouldn't uh, blow high when it was on cool like it was supposed to. And uh, it was a pain or a carrier, same thing. And uh, I went through it and I thought, man, you know, I don't understand because there's no error code. You know, there's a little diode on the on the control board that usually flashes if there's an error or it's out or something, but it, it didn't show an error code. So uh, I went ahead and replaced the boards anyway, but of course it didn't fix anything because that wasn't the problem. So I done a little bit more research and I found out that it had the ECM X13 motor, uh, which is a strange beast in that it has an internal control board. It also is powered all the time. Now if you're old school like me, you're used to having the control module for the motor outside the motor and it uh you know the speeds would vary according to which power lead was was uh electrified but with the x13 it doesn't work like that there's two versions there's one that's powered one 120 all the time the other one's powered 240 or 230 uh all the time it's powered electrified all the time and uh, that, that threw me for a loop originally because I, I was like, well, what? There's power going to the motor, but it, it, uh, it's hooked straight up to the dip, so it has no choice. That's how it was wired. That's how it's wired. So I started looking at it. I done some research and found out that there's a problem with these X13 uh, motors, ECM motors, and that on the internal module, there's a thermistor or an inrush, an inrush thermistor that burns out often and it causes issues. Okay, if you have an aftermarket motor, not a Gentech, uh, you can easily replace that. You know, you can get in there and check it and uh, and it's pretty easy repair. If you have a Gentech motor in there on your blower motor, first thing you need to do is make sure that's the problem. And how you do that is, uh, there's two rows of plug-ins and they're marked oh no that's common low ground neutral all right so that's what that is because this first wire this one that says common is the common to these and these run 24 volts 28 volts typically but it's called for 24 but most most time you're going to read around 28 but that's the common and then then uh these are the speed values one two three and four four and five some of them might not be used, some of them will be used, whichever your case is. But there'll be 28 volts sent to that, one of these prongs to turn the motor on. How you check it to see if the motor's bad is just turn the power off to the, to the unit, unplug this bottom one, this bottom plug, there's two plugs, the bottom plug that is labeled one, two, three, four, five, and then turn the power back on if the motor comes on and still blows then the motor's bad there's part of the motor that's bad on the opposite side sometimes the motor doesn't come on at all and what you do in that case to check it is you simply first off when you turn on your cool or whatever whatever mode you got on you turn on the air conditioner and then you put your ground onto this one which is common and start checking and see if you have power 28 volts to one of these leads if you don't have power to one of those leads then the the board is bad if you do have power to one of these leads 28 volts and you have your 230 or your 110 depending on which motor you have then and the motor is still not coming on then there's 
a bad motor. Okay, those are two things. Now, like I said, many of the engines, many of these motors are pretty easily uh, checked. This thermistor right here, right here, it's an inrush thermistor. Now you can readily read the numbers on there. SL221R02072. 0 now do not be deceived by people on the internet. There's Right now, there's people trying to get you to pay $25 for this thermistor, right, on YouTube. And and uh, if you just simply type in the number value that's on there, you can go to wherever, wherever your, uh, you can just type it in, and you can go, and here, let me, let I'm, instead of showing you that way, I'm just gonna show you this way. You can go, and then, uh, here, let me back up here. Here it is right here. Look, a dollar fifty-six. A dollar fifty-six. Now, if you want to know how to check this to see if it's good, see that there right there it says data sheet. Data sheet. You you click on the the thermistor data sheet and you look in here and it tells you right here the resistance of this from lead to lead is one ohm. If you have 100% of your current, which is 20 amps here, 100% of it, you're going to read 0 0.01 ohms. If you're running 50%, it's going to be 0 0.03. All right, so how do you check it? It's pretty easy. You get your trusty ohm meter. You put it on its lowest setting, and this one, its lowest setting is 200 ohms. You just simply put it across the two leads. On the ohm meter and see what the reading is now you should be reading if it's good it should be read one ohm if it reads anything else like 1.9 or 2 ohms the thermistor is bad now don't get ripped off by spending $25 on YouTube or on one of those other repair kits. This thing's only a $2 part. You can get it right here from, you can get it anywhere, right? It's two bucks. Now here's the thing. These control boards, when you order them from Gentech, they're $300, 200 to $300. And this is what they did to make sure that you purchase from them. They fill this, with a black compound that prevents you from to try to prevent you from to, from repairing this now i will never buy another gentech product because of this because of this now i ruined this checking out because if you like me i figured that there must be a, a nut or a, or a screw somewhere in there holding this this on but there is not there's no there is none it is literally glued in place by all of the the uh glued now many people put that stuff in to try to protect their science right so people won't won't do it but that is not the reason that gentech is doing this gentech is doing this to stop you from fixing it now if you look at this i got all of the rubber out because I thought that there was a screw in there but there is not now here's the problem when you take all the rubber off here there is a lot of surface mounted micro electronics that when you take try to try to take the rubber off will come off they end up coming off and since they're not marked of the value that's it you're done there's no going on there so lesson learned there what you do how you get this off is you go take your knife or take something and you start at this end right here and you go all the way up to here and at that point there's a, a space there that is right next to the metal so you can't get there so you go up here a little bit further 
and go the rest of the way around to about right here. And then again, there's a space there. It's by these two, by these two capacitors. There's a space right there and a space right there that your knife won't be able to fit besides the metal and the circuit board. So you just bypass that. And then you go all the way around. Then you pull all the stuff out of here. See, there's a little, there's a little hole right there. See that hole? Now, if you're smart, you could probably take a, a uh, air compressor with a needle valve that fills up a ball or something and just shove it underneath there and let the air separate the stuff off. But it's only glued on the edges. It's only glued on the edges with that glue because there's a rubber. There's a plastic. See, here's how it's glued. See, just on the edges. This plastic is on the bottom of that. And then this thing comes out. Now, when you get it out, it'll have this cover on the bottom like that. You'll have to pull that off. And then, once you get that far, you can scrape away the, pl the plastic, the rubber on the bottom. I did and found out the thermistor was bad. It's reading 1.92 two ohms. So two ohms means that uh, it's probably not working properly. But there's no use in me replacing this now. I mean, replacing that because when I pulled the stuff out here, out of here looking for a screw, I ruined the board. So there we go. I bought a used one for a hundred bucks. But the thing is, is that electronics, as long as you have the number and a data sheet, you can check them. This one, common problem. My suggestion, if you, there's two things you can do. One, there's probably a solvent that will take that stuff off pretty easy without hurting electronics. You can, I haven't tested. My guess is that it probably be something petroleum based might work uh, or alcohol based, something that will s dissolve that. Uh, so maybe diesel even, I don't know. Diesel dissolves asphalt, so it might dissolve that. So, um, that's the first suggestion. The second suggestion would be to not buy a Gentech replacement OEM motor for your unit. There is other manufacturers, Evergreen, uh, and that sell aftermarket units that if it's an X13, all you have to do is make sure that, it's, that it says X13 and you got the right horsepower. That's it. As long as you got, it says the right horsepower, right, half horse, third horse, three quarter horse, one horse, and it says X13 on it, literally, any of those replacement motors will work because they are, it doesn't matter about the rotation because they sense the, those replacement, most of those replacement motors automatically sense the rotation needed. Most of these engines, most of these motors are counterclockwise, but uh, that wouldn't matter. So, and they're cheaper too. The The motor itself, you buy a Gentech brand new one, seven to $800 they're gonna nail you for. Yeah, or more. And uh, you can get the replacement motor for usually around 300 or less. The plus side about the replacement motor is <clears throat> that these boards are not made like this. They're made so you can get to the electronics when they fail and you can fix them for pennies on the dollar. This is nothing. This whole thing about this rubber right here, it's all about ripping you off so that you can't fix it yourself and you have to buy their $300 module and literally, the module in many, I was looking at the price of the whole brand new motor and the brand new module, I mean, it's ridiculous. You can buy an aftermarket complete motor for less than you can buy the module from them for. So, so there it is. Gentech X313 motor. This is the FM19 module, uh, which I'm not gonna fix now because, you know, that was, that was an experience pulling all that security rubber off there and uh, that is them making an attempt to make you spend $300 to 
to repair that to buy their module instead of a buck 86 for the thermistor you know so that just makes me mad gen tech all right thanks for being with me this is the diy welcome to the farm Thank you.